hello jesse again uh if you're in the cosplay community you know me as ruffle butt this is part two of a two-part series about endometriosis this video is a lot more personal these were personal questions that people had asked me and uh please if you don't understand what endometriosis is check out the first video you only need to watch the first little bit to understand what it is and here we go how did they diagnose you and how long did it take it was officially diagnosed in 2009 by a specialist he was able to feel the endometrial tissue inside of me and my uterus at the time was retroflex which means it was in like a u-shape because it was being pulled down by the endometriosis it was also in my bowels so it was very 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 painful to defecate while i was on my menstrual and one time i passed out and hit my head on the sink i knew that i had endometriosis about a few months before i turned 19 seeing what my birth giver went through and my foster mother it was very easy for me to understand what was happening to my body. Two months after dealing with the severe cramps, I knew exactly what it was, and I immediately started going to doctors. I got misdiagnosed about seven times, even though I kept telling them, I have endometriosis, this is what this is, and they just did not care. I ended up getting surgery in 2010 because I did a case study. I actually have a printout of what they removed and what the biopsy results said each piece was, and I ended up having some fibroids as well. So I got diagnosed within five years, which was actually pretty great since most women don't get diagnosed for six to ten years. What do you do for the pain? This is my current regimen of pills. I actually, my doctors took me off tramadol, which is something that was really helping, and started putting me on other stuff. I'm on five painkillers currently and then a bunch of other stuff and stuff to counter the stuff that the stuff is doing. Other than that, I'm just trying to really stay positive and I try not to get mad at myself if I'm having a bad day or if I sleep in. I try to let my body do what it needs to do and if it feels it needs to sleep for a week, then I will go ahead and let my body sleep for a week. The biggest problem is even if I don't feel the pain, I still know it's there and I, I know my body is being really sluggish and it's very difficult for me to be able to separate myself from that completely. I'm immune to opiates, so stuff like Vicodin doesn't work, Percocet doesn't work, most of the stuff they give me does nothing and it's very strange. Even marijuana, like marijuana doesn't do anything for me either and I've tried both uh, THC and the one that is specifically for pain. It doesn't take my pain away, it just usually puts me to sleep. Before the pain got extremely bad that I did start going on meds, which is about two years ago, I was in the gym every day, which it helped to a point. And then once it hit that point, it was incredibly difficult to keep going. I just hit that wall and it was just so hard to get up every day and go to the gym. I miss being a beefcake. How much does your medication cost per month? Keep in mind, I did these calculations before my meds got changed, so I have even more meds now. My insurance actually covers all of my medications but one, and so I don't get that one, which is a lenocaine patch. And it works really well, but it's $11 a patch, and that's over $3,000 a year. So, monthly, I was spending $303.86 when I didn't have insurance. And yearly, that's $3,646.32. If you include the medication I can't afford, it would have been $595.52 a month and then $7,146.24. Now you also have to keep in mind, this doesn't include my IUD, which is a $1,500 IUD, and it doesn't include my Lupron injections, which are about $350 every three months. But the biggest thing that this doesn't include is the money that we lose not being able to work, the money that we lose from not being able to finish a job or go to a job, things like that. Which treatments have you tried? The big one is medication, which I started about two years ago. Let's see, I've been through physical therapy, hormones. I'm technically in menopause right now because of the Lupron, temporarily. Herbs, acupuncture, Reiki. I've had the laparoscopy surgery to remove what they could find, weed. Um, I did try the endometriosis diet, and I also, when I was working out a lot, was only eating chicken and broccoli, and it still didn't make me feel better. Then I found out that the person that developed the endometriosis diet, he didn't actually have any controls in his study. So it's not an accurate study and not something that we can really rely on. 
But boy, do people always send me stuff that I need to put in my diet to make myself feel better. That's also something that we have to deal with, is people thinking they know more about our bodies than we do. You said that you participated in a case study. What was it for and how did it go? So yes, I did a six-month case study at NIH, the National Institutes of Health. Um, it ended up being nine months as well because of check-ins, but there was nothing a part of the study with that. Um, the first six weeks, I had to get my blood drawn uh, twice a week at a certain hour. It had to be before 9 o'clock. So there were three parts to the case study. One of them was um, addressing the chronic pain in women who have endometriosis. I happened to be the most sensitive with pain in the study, so they actually used mine at the next conference to show people that this is what's going on. If you were to press on the uh, outer parts of my spine, it's incredibly sensitive there, and so I don't let people touch my back. I can't even get massages. It's awful. The second part of the case study was testing stem cells in women with endometriosis and women without endometriosis. My stem cells actually ended up growing better than anyone else's in the study, and they're frozen in France, and somebody wrote a paper about them. That's pretty cool. And the third part of the case study was testing the hypothalamus, which in women with endometriosis, their hypothalamus is constantly being stimulated, so the stress hormone is constantly being released in their body. It causes acne, we're constantly in fight or flight, it can cause, you know, spouts of anger and stuff like that. It's, it can be incredibly stressful because you don't know if this is a genuine reaction or if it's because of your hypothalamus. I didn't get paid to do the case study, they didn't house me. Um, what I got out of the case study was free surgery. It's actually really funny because when they went to go do my surgery, the tip of the laser is diamond and sapphire and it broke in my abdomen when they first started the surgery. And they tried really hard to find it, but they couldn't so they kept going on with the surgery and right as they were about to sew me up, they found it and were able to pull it out. And I still have it somewhere. So yeah, I liked, I liked doing it. I would never do it again. It was incredibly stressful and it was incredibly taxing on myself. And, you know, I really hate being asked what level of pain I'm at because I disassociate. So it's really difficult for me to gauge it. But I learned a lot about my own disease from doing the case study. And I'm really happy that they were able to learn from me. I mean, that's the best thing that you could ever ask for, right? What type of pain do you suffer from? The big one is back pain, uh, my upper and my lower back, and suffer like a tiny little area where I don't feel pain. I just had an MRI done on my spine and they said the upper ones are definitely swollen. Even though NIH cleared me of scoliosis, they wanted to test me again to make sure because my posture is always bad and it's really difficult to stand up straight when you're in chronic pain in your back. Obviously the menstrual pain when I have a period, IBS. And I started developing arthritis with the weather as well, so thankfully I live in California and it doesn't rain here very often, but when it does rain, my arthritis flares and I can barely use my hands. Does sex hurt more or help with the pain? Now, I'm incredibly unique. Most women with endometriosis have no sex drive. It's really painful for them and so they don't really think about it. I have a hyperactive sex drive. There's certain positions I can't do, but it depends on the guy and how he's shaped and how he's moving. There's only two things I can do where I don't think about how much pain I'm in. The first one is obviously sleeping, and the second one is sex. When I'm having sex, I'm not thinking about how much pain I'm in. And that, I think, is what's kind of causing the hyperactive sex drive. Have you ever ended or had somebody end a relationship due to disclosure? Short answer, yes. It's very difficult for me to date because I'm at that age where people want children and even if I could get pregnant I know it's hereditary and I don't want to spread it. If I had a girl I would just spend 18 years wondering whether or not she got endometriosis. I'm also an orphan so I'd much rather adopt. I have had men tell me flat out that they don't want to date me because I can't have children and that hurts a lot. Just literally nothing you do about it. As far as reproduction is concerned, how likely is it for you to conceive? Not likely. After my surgery, they told me if I wanted to have children, that was the window because I would be the most fertile that I would ever be in my life. Uh, even if I could conceive right now, which I probably could, but again, I don't want to have children because I don't want to spread my disease and I would much rather adopt. There's a lot of children that need homes. What about sport groups? I have not had good experiences with sport groups. I tried to do a couple of sport groups in New York. Uh, one of them that I liked, the, the two people that ran it, 
were going through surgery and so the group really never got back together. I don't like online support groups because I've been catfished by people who weren't actually sick before. I would love to start a support group and you know if you have a support group or go to a support group or want to start a support group with me you know leave it in the comments I will link it in the description. Um, having support is incredibly 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 important. If you can find a proper support group please Go to the meetings, talk with the other women, talk about their experiences, stuff that helped them out. I mean, they might be able to tell you something that you didn't know. I actually purchased the domain Beautiful Fighters a few years ago, wanting to turn it into a site for women with gynecological disorders, a place with information and forums and a place where women can go and talk about it and get information and talk to doctors. So that is definitely something that I want to work on for the future. And the final question. How does chronic pain affect your daily life? It's like living between two walls. And you know you have to climb out every day. And every day those walls close in a little bit more. But you still have to climb out of it and you still have to do it. And even if you decide to stay in there that day, it still closes just a little bit more. I've got severe depression. I go through fits where I sleep for a week and I just stay in my bed and cry knowing that I'm out of options, that it's not surgery. And the thing is, if it wasn't for endometriosis, I'd be like the healthiest person on the planet. And it's so difficult to know that my body was built to survive, but this disease just holds me back. It isolates you, it alienates you from people. You never know what you want, or what you want somebody to say, or do. It's destroyed so many of my relationships. I have to deal with so many doctors. And most of them have no idea about anything with endometriosis. I'm on so much medication, and I just, I'm not here. I'm not here. I'm somewhere else. I can't really do events anymore. The last event that I did just killed me. I miss having perfect posture. I miss working. I miss taking for granted being able to get out of bed in the morning. I miss not having to take a handful of pills twice a day. It takes your humanity away. In closing, thank you for watching both videos if you did or just one or whatever. Again, in the description, there's timestamps for each question that was asked. Thank you to everyone who asked questions. Sorry it ended on such a low note. It's a very real and very serious disease, and I wish that more medical professionals treated it that way. There's a lot of celebrities with it. Jillian Michaels, Padma Lakshmi, Lena Dunham just came out to say that she has endometriosis and she's taking a break from girls because of it. really hope that this video has helped you guys and help to understand the disease and how it affects so many different aspects of our life even the smallest thing like having to go to the bathroom brushing our teeth it's a process women with endometriosis are going to be some of the strongest people you've ever met in your life because you have to be strong to be able to deal with this thank you guys for watching the videos i hope you're looking forward to my next one i promise it won't be so grim Thank you for taking the time to help understand the disease and you can help other people in the process, which is great.